doing our series on blackness as a concept of power. Now what came up was actually the idea of what do Africans think or what, do, what vision do Africans have for the African continent. So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually just going to pay you um, a little clip from the actual episode on blackness as a concept of power and then we'll take it from there. So I'm just going to say now, should the people that are watching us now expect the uh, uh, coming episode? Definitely. Just gonna Definitely. Talk I to think, some people and ask them. No, but should, should, like, what's, what's, what's your vision for Africa? Africa they right? should write it out in their comments. Mm, mm, right, right. exactly. Yeah, if you have a vision out there, there right? Yeah. You want to share what that vision is. We imagine We'd really like Africa. to hear. Yeah, right? Mm. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, put it in the comments so we can hear. Yeah, right? Then we're going to go out there. We're going to do this and talk to some people. Just try and have that understanding now. What are people thinking about Africa, right? Because mm -hmm. maybe we're making a lot of assumptions. We might get out there and actually find <laughs> and that, wow, everyone has the same vision. Same <laughs> what? Vision. So what's the problem, right? So the vision mm -hmm. isn't the problem. Mm -hmm. Or we might get out there and realize that, wow, everyone is going in all these directions mm -hmm. and there's no focus towards driving towards that one vision, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. So as you see from that video, what came up was that we're trying to find out if Africans have a similar vision for Africa or if we have completely different visions. And the only way to actually find that out was to go out and actually talk to people on the streets to find out what they're thinking. So what we did is that we went out to Maweneng and actually had a normal chat with the people there and some of them gave us good contributions. Some of them were a little hesitant, but let's actually take a look at the footage first and then we'll come back and talk more about it. Hey, how's it going? Um, so we've been having a talk about blackness and as, as a concept of power. And one thing that came up in our discussion was what is actually the vision for Africa? And we, we wanted to, um, started to wonder, like, do people think the same thing about Africa? Like, do our leaders, all the way down to the business people, all the way down to the everyday person on the street, have the same vision for Africa? So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be in Maboneng, walking the street, talking to people and asking them what their vision for an ideal Africa is and what they think they can do to bring this vision about. So let's go find out. My vision for an ideal Africa. Yeah. A united Africa. The true emancipation of the African people. I suppose it's an Africa where I'm not oppressed by my own people, mm -hmm. where the leaders we have actually do care about the people. Ideal Africa is when our African leaders are not stealing from us, looting that's happening all over uh, Africa, um, people living in the villages are not getting enough health care. Uh, Africa with no borders, uh, Africa with one economy, uh, Africa that doesn't have illiteracy. Ideal Africa for me is um, a borderless Africa. You know, people from the southern part of Africa must not be restricted to go to the northern part. By restriction, I'm not talking about, well, I'm talking uh, economic as well and uh, borderline terms. Firstly, you know, taking out the borders, you know what I mean? Because the borders are the ones that making our people like divided, you know what I mean? So those I mean, borders were placed in Berlin Conference of 1884 and 1885. But today, here in South Africa, we're independent. But we still, you know, I mean, you know, have those borders that were created by these colonialists. So, yeah, I think if we can remove those and proclaim exodus, Africa will be one of the greatest continent ever. Yeah. My ideal Africa is an Africa that is back to God. We should be God-fearing and understanding that God is the ultimate creator. We are created by Him and a world without God is very destructive. As we've seen, there's a lot of I'm very old school actually, very, very old school. If you look at things nowadays, they're not as they used to be. And looking at this current situation whereby there's no alcohol sales over the weekend, that's what it was when we were growing up. On Sundays, there was no alcohol at the bottle store. And I remember if you needed to go to a bottle store, you needed to produce your ID. Where has that all gone? My vision of an ideal Africa is when everybody just loves each other. and. We all look out for each other, where we all become socialists in a way, where, where nobody lacks and nobody has like hate for each other, where we're all unified as when we were all fighting against the struggle, 
during apartheid, like June 16, how people even died for each other. Look at Hector Peterson, all of those people that died. Okay, my vision of a Nigerian Africa is um, to make Africa a one state, an Africa that will support each other, an Africa that will uh, be a competitive uh, um, continent against the entire world. Because I believe this is where the natural, the real is coming from. And uh, the entire world can actually benefit. Because it's very hard, you know, to, to enjoy the other parts of Africa. As an African, you know, you are only allowed a certain number of days. Um, it feels a bit violating, you know, for somebody who was born because it feels like within your own yard you are not allowed to move to certain areas. So for me, my idea would be like a totally borderless Africa. That can um, uh, happen. If you take, for example, um, Johannesburg. Johannesburg is almost like a simple model of what Africa should be like. We've got different nationalities, you know, they are trading businesses and everything is happening. So if we take that on a large scale, that would bring about change in terms of um, how things are done and it will bring about a positive change as well in the economy of Africa. And I suppose it would be nice for other Africans to not hate another African. <laughs> There's a lot of that going around and it would be nice to just be a united Africa where we don't hate but literally looking at another African next to myself and not a Nigerian or a South African or a Zimbabwean, but I just see another manifestation of myself as a well. The whole world has become so permissive, it's an anything goes type of world. So if we could go back to the roots of learning to live under, they call it, it's, it's my right but rights come with responsibilities. So mine is people going back to God himself. That's my ideal vision of Africa, where Africans can come and unify. It didn't matter whether you were Zulu, whether you were Mozambican, whether you were Nigerian. We were, all countries were helping each other at that particular time. So I just feel like my ideal version of Africa is when we all United. Uh, Africa that doesn't have racism and an Africa that's moving forward. So I believe all these presidents or us as business people, if we can come together and you know be make Africa a competitive con continent. So my ideal Africa is we when we have leaders that look out for Africans. Like we should have that freedom to our internal affairs, our dispute. We must find solution within, within ourselves, within the co context of the continent, before we can find solution from uh, abroad. And what is your second question? The second question is, what do you think you can do, if anything, to actually make this vision a reality? Making it a reality is living it. I'm a Christian artist, I'm a creative. The name of my business is 100% Christian, and on my work, what? I attach scripture, uh, specifically dealing with Proverbs 31. It's 100% Christian, I am. Uh, God's desire God's desire is my identity and my identity is to preach and minister the Word of God living it showing other people love and teaching them how to love in my everyday lifestyle and through the works of my hands I glorify God and preach the gospel and change the world one person at a time I'm already doing it through word sound and power you see by keeping the shop by keeping parties, uh, by keeping gatherings, by having talk shows or, and, or, 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 or debates, and uh, by, um, well, I guess, it's playing my part, basically, by just assisting who I can assist or willing, who are willing to talk to me. Also by providing books. So ones and ones can learn for themselves. Okay, currently our business started as um as a sock business. So we wanted to tell the story of an Africa through the socks. So my business partner, whose name is Sibu, 
started a business called Skinny Smooth Socks. So he was skinny back then. His name is Boo, so he loved socks. So he wanted to tell, to tell the story uh, about socks. With Mandela, we have a long walk to freedom, which I think the socks can tell a better story when it comes to that. You inspire someone to walk their long mile. Uh, you inspire someone to do whatever they want to do and push, 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 push. So I believe with our business, if we can buy local, if we can produce as, a, as an Africa, and believe in the product that we bring in, then we can be able to nurture that, grow that, and make it uh, competitive. And that will actually bring Africa together and believe in the oneness uh, that I'm talking about. Yes. I just have to love all Africans. We need to be for all Africans all over the globe. Like if I say African, I should not be xenophobic. I should love um, many. There's not much I can do in terms of the leadership because that involves politics and I don't really like politics. But I suppose in terms of just being one Africa, it's just loving myself and loving the next person regardless of where they come from. That's it. Well, for me, um, I would have to invest in energy. Um, re renewable energy for me is, is my thing and I would um, invest it in Africa. Because if we see in Africa to be Generously, we only we have 300 days of sunshine. So if you take those 300 days of sunshine and convert it, that would put a lot of uh, that would reduce a lot of strain on the national grids of different states when they need uh, power. And number two, it will reduce the level of emissions. You know, thereby we are also working in line with uh, what the superpowers um, agreed on when it comes to to global warming. Um, and as well, like um, Africa is, is is a mixture of the wild and the urban. And with renewable energy, we do not have to expand, you know, cutting down trees and entering the territories of the wildlife to to expand our energy grid. Whilst we can um, we can have renewable energy like built on on each individual's place, um, that would uh, reduce a lot of stress on the energy and on the wildlife in Africa as well. That's my idea. And myself, I'm an entrepreneur. I sell like African clothes, and um, I'm also a poet and a theater practitioner at the same time. So I want to use my skills at first to make people proud of who they are, you know, so that they can know themselves. Because a lot of us Africans are not proud of our skin color. We just want to, you know, take the Eurocentric narrative and you know subscribe to that so i would like to challenge uh, the people who are still school going to to embrace the fashion the food our language you know um our clothes you know so so that you can become all you can't say i'm african when you you don't embrace your food for example you know love Love conquers it all, you know, when you have love, you have God, when you have love, you have people, when you have love, you know, you have everything. So I feel like love and being able to help wherever I can in terms of if anybody comes to me asking for something, I'll be there in their time of need. We start from joining splitted particles. We, we, we don't expect that much huge change in, you know, at the course of one time. But the little contributions that the ones make uh, at the social level, like we are now at the social market. Social market supposed to be a media in which those ideals of social redemption are uh, mostly advocated, uh, mostly discussed, mostly pursued. Okay, so welcome back. As you can see, the very interesting responses we got there. And now what we're going to do is actually we're going to take a look at some of these responses to see if we actually have, from the few responses we got, a common vision for Africa and what that common vision is, or if we have completely different ideas. Now, I think first things is that um, Kimberly was there with me the whole time helping me film. And I think one thing that we noticed is that, first of all,
people were a little bit hesitant to talk about this, right? Like it was like, I don't know if it's because they actually never really think about it or if there was other things that were giving them a little bit of hesitation to actually give an answer. And I just want to hear what you were thinking about. Or oh, maybe some people are just camera shy. Like I'm <laughs> sitting here, I'm like, ooh, a lot of people are going to be seeing me on Facebook. Yeah. It's crazy. So some people are genuinely camera shy. Yeah. So it could be that they don't think about it, mm -hmm. but it could be language barriers. Because right. some people, we were asking them in English, and too bad none of us could really translate into right. any of the languages in vernacular. So yeah, yeah. it could have been that as well. Yeah. Or it could be just some people are camera shy. Yeah, some people are camera shy. Or they shy, just right? don't have an opinion. Exactly, just don't have an opinion. Because yeah. um, I, I like to say, like, um, I, was, I was in the episode, as you saw, where we actually came up with the idea to do this. And you weren't there at that time. So no. being someone who wasn't there at the time, when I actually first gave you the idea and I told you, like, this is what I'm going to be doing today, how did you feel when you heard that question of like, what's the vision for Africa? Did you have an instant like, I know exactly what it is? Or was it a little bit like, hmm, what is my vision for an ideal Africa? Or like, I don't know if this is part of the video that's yeah. being uploaded, but yeah. I'm sure when you asked me that question, you can see that I, I sort of go quiet for a bit and mm -hmm. I roll my eyes trying to think. Yeah. Because, you know, we all have opinions every day and we express them, but when someone actually stops to ask you mm -hmm. for your opinion, you're like, wait a minute, do I actually believe some of the things that I say half yeah. of the time? Yeah. Or do I have a different opinion about what I actually say? Yeah. For me, generally, because I've done a lot of, I guess, political courses in yeah. university yeah. and international relations, sometimes my views are a bit pessimistic and I'm not sure <laughs> if I should share them out with the world, you yeah, know, because yeah. I don't like being attacked. Yeah. yeah. But yeah so do you think like that's probably some of the similar feelings that people were going because i remember there was one particular individual that we tried to question and they firstly weren't even comfortable to go on camera that's yeah. natural right mm -hmm. but then we even asked them off camera like do you want to just at least tell us so we just have an idea of what people are actually thinking and they weren't even comfortable at all to even tell us you know off camera what they think and that i'm not even sure if there was a misunderstanding as to what we're actually asking or if they felt like i don't know completely uncomfortable maybe they felt like this is a topic we shouldn't be discussing and i don't know do you feel like the topic of africa like being ideal or was ideal implies something that's good something that's great do you think that's such a foreign concept in the minds of people that is like what are we why are we even talking about this well first of all i don't think ideal means something that's good uh -huh. ideal is it, I feel like it's a very relative word. It's yeah. good for you. Yeah, like it's, true. <laughs> it's like utopia. There's this something that is all perfect. There's some utopian concept to it. Yeah. And I think it's very, very relative. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like people just really don't... Sometimes you just don't think about it. Just don't you think know? about it, yeah. I don't... Yeah. I'm, but funny enough, though, I feel like if you were to meet them or sit with them... Yeah or just having normal conversations you figure out what they wish for africa because we do express these things you know mm. it could be in the expression like oh my god there's no electricity i wish there was electricity <laughs> right, there yeah. you go ego you yeah. want in africa where there's electricity 100%. or oh my god we have no water or yeah. you know service delivery or things right. like that those right. are things we we express how i do africa every day yeah, i right. think we yeah. just i think when you just put the word ideal and you put africa mm -hmm. but just the basic things that we want for ourselves yeah. as a black person, yeah. I think every black person would want that for yeah. themselves. Yeah, so right. I think we pretty much express the whole ideal concept of Africa every day. Yeah, 100%. You know, right? In our conversations. It's just yesterday when you have to spot someone and right be like, in front, like Here Yay, we go. tell me. They're yeah, like, right. ah, yeah. but I think they do have an <laughs> they opinion. They do have an idea. Okay, that's yeah. cool. And, and I think one of the things that came out was that definitely um, the few people that did talk to us had a, co a common theme to what to what they were they were doing or what the, their ideal Africa was, and on that common theme was definitely a unification of some sort, right? We had some people talk about that unification in terms of the spiritual, mm -hmm. some of them talking in a very practical um, sense, economical, whether it's political, and some even talking about just completely just let's just break down the borders. That's one of the most common themes. So mm -hmm. I want to hear your thoughts on some of those concepts, like especially the ones with the borders, because that was the one that was most common right across. That's a very specific topic. And, you know, one, 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 um, one person we interviewed actually went as far as mentioning that, like, look, these borders are not even ours. No. It's kind of ludicrous that we, we keep, keep them, them, right? So wh how come if people are thinking that way, which we assume, like, for now, at least we've got enough people to tell you that in Mabuneng, there seems to be a general consensus that borders don't seem to make sense. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is missing? How come people aren't talking about this more 
openly or is it something that we should be more active as our everyday citizens pushing for this i mean why do we have borders why do we have borders why do i have to be a south african why do i have to be a nigerian why can't i just be african you know <laughs> yeah i don't know i feel like it has a lot of <laughs> i don't know psychological right. probably dating back from um colonialism where mm -hmm. we thought that this was our own this was our land so now now that that's gone we still attach the same thing that this is mine mm -hmm. so maybe that's why we still have borders because we were sort of disenfranchised or something that we felt belong well that was ours mm -hmm. so now we keep these borders to maintain yeah, what's right. ours sort of ownership, it's my right? it's mine yeah. so i'm gonna retain it even though to me it really doesn't make sense because when you look at i feel like that's why we have so much civil unrest because when you look at how the borders were drawn up they're drawn up with people who didn't understand the cultural differences mm -hmm. we had basically no understanding of who we are yeah and they separated or they lumped up people with different cultures mm -hmm. and now you find that we are fighting because yeah, yeah. we we don't on yeah. our own we didn't get along you yeah, know now yeah. we're being lumped together yeah. to, to to stay they're not one thing though is that we were not perfect before yeah. the borders were drawn but yeah. they they also just they didn't, didn't, help, they the didn't help yeah they uh -huh. kind of made it worse yeah and what is even funnier for me is the fact that when i think of planning a holiday for me going to paris yeah seems the first thing that's on my mind yeah. than going to kenya yeah. sometimes actually going to kenya is more expensive yes, than me going to paris thing, yeah so it's like huh these borders and it's so funny how you literally have Africans who have been more to Europe than yeah, their own continent. continent. That's true. Yeah. And it's it's just funny how that works out. Mm. Like if Europeans could come together, much as they're the ones also I mean, they put the borders, mm. but they also figure, hmm, these borders, we retain them, but <laughs> they're an obstacle in in some situations. Yes. And they came out with their Schengen passport, you know, that allows you to yeah. travel amongst Europe. Yeah, yeah. Why can't we see that mm -hmm. as well? Like, right. but I get it. We also have a lot of developmental issues where, you know, some Africans feel like, no, when other Africans come, they're going to take our jobs. They're going to, you know, dispossess us of our things, you know. So there's that yeah. also. There's just a lot, you know, it's yeah. a lot to unpack. But yeah. personally, borders, are, they don't make sense anymore, especially with the way we're so interconnected. Mm -hmm. So either we remove them totally mm -hmm. or we come up with a common passport at yeah. least for us as a continent yes. if you still want to maintain them we maintain them for people outside mm -hmm. africa but for us but within, for us the within yeah. you allow you know yeah you allow that movement like it's not fair that someone in the south if i i don't know anything about what's going on in the mm -hmm. north right it yes. is crazy yeah yeah we're on the same continent, continent exactly right and I, and I totally understand that like what you're saying people have that issue of like we're not at the same level that's one talk that have that's come up yeah. so the people worried like oh if we open up all the borders everyone's gonna maybe rush into south africa or rush into one of the other more developed african states but you know i'm like okay cool but what's so bad about that you know maybe we, by actually getting us in these situations where everyone is together we can start working things out i'm not going to say it's going to be perfect and everyone's just going to get along instantly but it's a necessary but step. But don't you feel like it's a bit idealistic to think that yeah. people can just, you know, it is, it is, it is idealistic, right? Which is why I'm, I don't, well, I don't expect it. I guess right, the word ideal, hundred percent, right? So I don't expect it to work out in one go. But it's a step that has to be taken. You know, we can't keep um, looking at the other side and seeing that. Oh, you know what? Over there is looking a lot better. You know, over there we're united and we don't have borders. But right between here and there. I'm going to have to go through so much trouble, so I'm not going to do anything about it, right? We actually need to go through that trouble to get to that ideal, right? There's actually no way to do it. We can make it easier, right? Which is now by continuously to develop ourselves or do it in stages, like starting off with maybe an economical um, freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what would, I think we're taking steps towards that with the African Free Trade Agreement. Mm -hmm. It's not implemented yet. It's not perfect. But there's an idea to actually get us towards some sort of um, cooperation within our continent. So do you think that with um, this new African continental you know, free trade agreement that we have, yeah. it's like a step towards the ideal Africa? Yeah, 100%. I think this is the step in the right direction. Because at least if, if people can start moving around Africa on an economical basis to understand that this is one region economically, 
it may start to break down the barriers that wait a minute why if we're one region economically why can't you be one region politically why can't you be one region just ideologically right why can't we have the same ideal and cooperate and move as one um, there are still some people out there that definitely will tell you that having a united africa is not a good idea mm -hmm. right it's uh, having the borders taken down is not going to result in a more prosperous Africa. It's going to result in complete chaos. Mm -hmm. And the little bit of good that we have on Africa is going to be completely destroyed. But right now, we're just assuming. And in line with that, we actually want to go out there a little bit more and talk to more people and actually find out, get more of these different opinions. Because we managed to get like an uh, indicator of what the common opinion is in one aspect. But we, there could be a lot of people that may be thinking completely differently from the what I think seven people that we spoke to mm -hmm. yesterday. So I think um, in general, what what we've done now is a, I think a pretty good step, first step, because we're just now just being people aware, being aware of what's happening, which is the education aspect now of just educating people and what the possibility of having a United Africa that is something that's out there. We can be an EU. We can be a United States of America, just the United States of Africa. Mm -hmm. Wink, wink, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, um, you know, the thing is is that we need to be able to take that step from the grassroots level. Like, the people on the streets need to be asking for a what? For a United Africa. Because I think politicians, as much as they tend to do things on their own, they still want to have the popular vote in some aspects, right? Yeah. They still want people to be behind them. But they want the people to tell them in a way what it is that they want. Mm -hmm. Most of us talk about our economic freedom, we want our economics, we want to be able to live and work and you know, mm -hmm. wherever we want, but not too many of us actually outright say, take down the borders, <laughs> right? We yeah. want a united Africa, I'm mm -hmm. done with this border, I don't want to have to get my passport stamped the next time I cross, uh, uh, you know? Like, it was actually pretty funny how during Corona, mm -hmm. COVID-19, where I expected the world to be united, mm -hmm. not to sound mean yeah or it was just funny how the first thing we thought of was oh let's contract a 37 point something i don't know billion or million dollar fence along <laughs> the bait bridge border yeah, right. as if that would stop the virus yeah sorry uh -huh. it's uh, an aside it's yeah. just it was a virus or a pandemic that required unity but the first thing we thought of was mm. separating us under the guise of protecting mm. you know like right, yeah. Yeah, it was just an aside that I just put, <laughs> right, you that you know, to put out, there. Yeah, but, out there. But like, and I, and I mean, these are the important points. So why would we make a move like that when we're trying to drive towards unity? Is our leaders thinking about unity? And I think there's a whole lot we can unpack on that, which is why this series is definitely going to be continuing. The ideal Africa is a topic that we can't exhaust, right? There's so much around it. And there's so much other information from our leaders and from the past um, talking about what an ideal Africa would be and how we can actually get to it. So we're going to continue exploring this idea. And I'd like to thank Kimberly for helping me out getting this um, series going. And you'll definitely be seeing more of us working together on this and really trying to get to the bottom of what is the ideal Africa and how can we get there? What can we do as individuals to make this a reality? Uh, uh, you know, uh, to, make, sorry, to make this ideal a reality. Sorry. And I also think that it is important to know that just as a normal, like I, I'm an average Joe. I have nothing to my name aside just Kimberly, I have really nothing to my name, but what you think matters because that's actually how we'll ever achieve anything. So drop in the comments and yeah. if you feel like you want, you know, to be part of the series, maybe, you know, also drop in the comments. Right? Maybe yeah, we can make us, arrangements send and we videos. can, we, yeah, send videos That'll of be, commentary yeah, on what we'll you it. think mm. should be an ideal Africa. You know, we're all entitled to our opinions. My opinion is not right. Mm -hmm. This is not right, mm -hmm. but it's just important to to have our voices out there. That's you know one way we have mm -hmm. our voices out there. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, I think Emily really raised a very important point there. Like, please do comment, like, subscribe, share this video, and send us your videos. We would love to hear from you, and we will actually use your videos to actually send a message out there because we want to have all the opinions. We don't want to be stuck in like a thought bubble where we're just throwing around the same ideas. And because, it's okay you know, right? to have it's a different, different opinion. opinion right? It's different, really okay. Different opinions help us paint the full picture. That's yeah. how we can actually get to the bottom of what's important and what's not important. So yeah, I think that's everything from our side. We'd like to say thanks for watching. Thank you. Please keep watching. Please engage. And we really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Peace.